Okay, protein group. This is where I usually get the most moans and groans because the hardest thing about protein group is portion control, which again, is not our primary focus of what this group is about, but we'll get into it a little bit. So protein, we want to get the more protein than fat. So like ribeye, while it is delicious for some people, I don't like it. <laughs> I freak out if there's too much fat and gristle in my meat. I don't have a problem with bones, but I have a real problem with... Okay, moving on. I should delete this and start over, but I'm not. I'm not doing it. The more fat that something has in it, there's less protein in that. And if we're eating it for protein and our body's going to recognize it as protein, we need to aim for the protein. So anything with the word round or loin is a leaner cut of meat, regardless of what animal you cut it off of. So top of the round, eye of the round, sir, loin, all of those things. There's a couple of them that I can't think of right now, but any, anything with the word round or loin is a leaner cut of meat. Any kind of, any kind of ground meat needs to be at minimum 90% lean, at minimum. Um, that way you're getting more meat and less fat. We're gonna come to the fat, that's a whole nother group. If we combine the two together all the time, then we're just doubling down on the fat. And that's a big problem of why so much of us struggle with heart disease and um, weight management. So what counts as protein? Um, animals that walk, animals that swim, <clears throat> Greek yogurt, yogurt, cottage cheese. Um, Shakeology is a big protein source in my day. Tofu, as long as you get organic tofu. I'm not gonna get on a soapbox about GMOs and all that today. That's one of the foods that I'm firm on getting organic. That's anything soy. Um, seafood, kefir, eggs is a big one. I eat a lot of eggs because they're cheap and I'm cheap, frugal, cost conscious. Uh, let's see, buffalo. Buffalo is becoming more um, popular. It's, it's kind of expensive, but buffalo meat is really, really, really lean. Um, so you're getting more lean protein that your body can absorb. <clears throat> sardines. <gasps> Raise your hand if you love sardines. <laughs> I got a can in my cabinet that's been there for about a year. I'm not brave enough. I'm just not. Uh, I need to be. I'll do it. I'll own it. That's my new challenge. All right. Deli meat, not so much. Because why? Because of all the processing that it goes through for the nitrates and the nitrites that they add to it to keep it stable in the deli and for all of the sodium that's in there. So if you do get um, meat from the deli, it needs to be no salt added and it needs to be like as the naturalist brand you can find. So Hormel makes a really good natural choice uh, I think it's called natural choice turkey and ham um, Applegate makes a good organic um, deli meat if you just really love sandwiches hot dogs <laughs> hot dogs don't really fit in clean eating world it doesn't really matter if you spend like eight dollars a pound on hot dogs they're still hot dogs uh, but you can get organic hot dogs you can get 100% all beef natural source no curing hot dogs uh, I mean, and that can count, all right? So again, if you can pronounce everything in it, if it's an all beef hot dog and salt and spices, um, you know, that's better than getting bar S. <laughs> bar S. Ooh, I don't even know how many bar S hot dogs I ate in my lifetime, plenty. Okay, so the other big thing about meat is the portion size. We're Americans, we're used to eating half to a whole plate of meat and then like some potatoes and not any vegetables at all. So here it is, a pound of meat is four servings. So 16 ounces of meat feeds four people or makes a meal for you with three lunches for the rest of the week. All right, so that's what you're ultimately aiming for. If you are nowhere near though on God's green earth, then taper down a little bit. If you usually eat a pound of meat by yourself, then you know start with 12 ounces and then get used to 12 and then move down to eight and then get used to that. If you're used to eating Fred Flintstone sized meat and you try to go to four ounces of meat, A, you're gonna hate me. Um, B, it's too much of a drastic change for your body to get used to. Um, 
and you're probably gonna be hungry all the time. If your protein takes the longest to digest out of all of the food groups. So if you're used to throwing down a lot of protein all the time, and then you take it to a little bit in efforts to try to not have so much heaviness in your diet, then your body's gonna be like, what? Fill me up, dude. So it's just one of those things to come down gradually with. <clears throat> Excuse me. The more I talk, the more this cold kind of kicks it. Tea time, All right? So again, the basic things is keep it as natural as possible. So you don't get a frozen chicken patty. You know, get uh, go down and get chicken breast. You know, and make your own grilled chicken sandwich. Right? Um, don't get fish sticks. Go get. Um, haddock or cod or tilapia or whatever it's gonna be in your life every food that anybody can ever throw out here somebody's gonna have some sort of conspiracy around so just pick and choose your battles as far as protein goes if you're vegetarian or vegan then you choose your options for protein too but the portion control is still there okay it's all right we can do it remember yesterday we talked so much about the um, the produce side of things, the non-starchy vegetables, this in a perfect world is what you would fill the rest of your plate with when you're cutting down on the meat. If you eat really heavy food, you're going to feel and be really heavy. If you take down the heavy stuff, fill in the void with the lighter things that are higher in fiber, you're going to feel more light. Your body is going to feel lighter and less sluggish and drudgy. Drudgy is a word. I promise.